So I'm going to run through two flows that are used for server-to-server -server, server -server integration where user interaction isn't involved. So the job bearer flow and the SAML assertion bearer flow. So these two flows share quite a lot of commonalities. So we'll talk about aspects which are relevant to both as well as some specifics for each one. So for both of these, as I mentioned, they're both in, in, intended for server-to-server -server where we're not prompting the user for um, for direct involvement. Um, in the case of the job bearer token, the client will be constructing a JSON web token and signing that with an SX509 certificate. Um, for the SAML bearer uh, assertion flow, uh, SAML assertion bearer flow, um, the client will be constructing an XML assertion um, and signing that with a certificate. So that signature will be, in both cases, checked by the auth server, and that provides the basis of, of identity. Um, so in terms of system requirements that we have around this, so we need to ensure that the client is able to manage the private key of the certificate it's using for signing. So it needs to be able to protect, protect the secret. The certificate needs to be made available to the authorization server so that it can, it can check the signature on the, on the assertion or the, or the jot. Um, we need to ensure that user authorization is in place. So, um, so the, rep, the uh, exact implementation of how that's that's made is, is up to the uh, up to the auth server. But we need to ensure that that per user authentic authorization is in place. And we also generally want to ensure that uh, good good security practices is in place. So I'm going to run through the main steps for both of these flows. So for both job bearer and SAML assertion bearer, there are three main systems involved. So the client, which is typically a client server application, uh, the authorization server where the user is logging in, or the, well, where the user has, has um, where the user authorization is held, and the resource server, which is the the application that the client will be integrating with. So the flow starts with the client um, making a request for an access token via HTT and HTTP POST request. So this is an out of band POST request from the client server. So this, this is made to the token endpoint and for the job bearer flow, we'll, uh, there's a parameter assertion which is set to the, to the, uh, the signed, signed job. So this, this, um, uh, this this payload um, has, has three elements. So there's a there's a header, um, which contains information about the signing algorithm that, that's that's used, and the actual uh, the the jot itself, um, and then the signature, um, which and those are separated by um, by full stops or periods. The and then these as as part of the token request, there's also a grant type specified as as job bearer. So the authorization server will uh, will validate the signature that's been provided as, as part of the, the payload and the assertion parameter. It'll validate the JOT itself, check that it's constructed correctly. Um, it'll check the user's access to the to the to the app at the, at the corresponding to the client ID in, in the JOT. Um, and it'll then issue the access token in response to the HTTP POST request. Uh, this response will also include the scope um, to indicate to the client wh which scopes um, uh, the uh, the uh, the user has been has been authorized for. Um, the client at this point is then free to call the APIs of the resource server with the access token that's been provided. So next on to SAML bearer. So um, so the steps are very similar here. Uh, the client starts with an access token request to the authorization server, again to the token endpoint, an outbound HTTP post request. Um, the assertion parameter here is set to the signed SAML assertion, um, and the grant type is set to SAML to bearer. Uh, again, the authorization server here validates the signature that's been provided in the payload, it validates the assertion itself, um, and it checks that the user has. Um, uh, has has authorization in place to, for the um, uh, for the, uh, for the for this client app. The response is then made to the HTTP POST request um, and the access token provided to the client, which can then be used to 
interact with the APIs of the resource server. So in terms of other things to consider, so in both of these flows, uh, we neither of them involve client secrets. So the trust is, is based on the signature that's supplied to the, um, to the payload. The neither flow will return a refresh token, which is, is, is generally not a, not a problem because this is a, um, this doesn't involve user interaction. It's typically quite easy to, to repeat the flow to, um, to retrieve new access tokens when, when an access token expires. Um, we can also, in both the JOT and, and the, the SAML assertion, there's mechanisms to include additional claims. So if we want to communicate in real time information from the client to the authorization server, there's mechanisms in, in both of these to do that. The authorization mechanism itself, as I mentioned, this is up to an, the, the specific implementation. This isn't covered um, explicitly by the, by the OAuth spec. Um, if Salesforce is acting as the authorization server, the way um, Salesforce um, controls this is through the option um, of uh, setting the, the connected app to be um, to expect that admin approved users are, are pre-authorized. So this means that if a user um, has uh, has permission to the client app through their, their uh, to, to the connected app through their profile or or, or a permission set. And then there's no need for them to directly provide authorization. Um, with the option, all users may self-authorize. Um, this um, uh, under this option, we require users to have previously consented to the scopes that are required um, for the, the the job bearer or the assertion SAML assertion bearer. And um, so that that approval needs to have happened with it with a different OAuth flow essentially. So so an interactive OAuth flow. Um, a few things just around um, the job bearer flow. So, uh, so the attributes that are included within the, the JOT include uh, the audience. This needs to be set to the identifier for the authorization server. For Salesforce, that would be the, the login URL. And the ish, uh, issuer parameter uh, or ish parameter needs to be set to the client identifier. Um, so the client ID of the of the connected app. Um, if, that, if that's a, um, if Salesforce is the uh, the auth server and the subject needs to be set to an identifier for the user which for salesforce needs to be the salesforce username uh, there's also an exp expiry parameter so this is it's typically recommended this is set to be as as short as possible to um to ensure that that, that the jobs um is if, if it was to be compromised can't be can't be reused um subsequent to when it was issued um, the job bearer flow is used in the uh, CLI authorization, um, the, uh, the, the Salesforce DX CLI. Um, it's also can be used um, as, as part of a um, as part of a call out, the authentication um, for, for a call out uh, that's made um, through name credentials. So there's an option in name credentials to use use a job bearer approach. Um, then uh, a few things specific to the SAML assertion bearer flow. Uh, so the SAML assertion itself, so it follows the standard SAML assertion format, which is uh, an XML format, uh, which would then be base64 encoded um, to be um, uh, sent, sent through to the auth server as part of a REST request. The attributes within the assertion itself, the audience would be set to the identifier for the authorization server. Uh, the issuer needs to be set to the uh, to the entity who issued the assertion originally. Um, so the OAuth spec doesn't stipulate that that needs to be necessarily the the, the client application, although for Salesforce and uh, that 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 is enforced. Um, so these two these two um, uh, these two stipulations I mean that at least for Salesforce it's, it's not. Whilst it could be kind of tempting to think well. Since it's a it's an assertion based um, uh, mechanism that we could potentially reuse an IDP assertion that's been provided for the client application, um, but the combination of, of audience needing to be um, uh, the, the the Salesforce identifier and issuer needing to be the uh, the client's application ID, I mean that 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 IDP assertion which would have those set differently um, to be specific to the client um, wouldn't wouldn't 
uh, it wouldn't be possible to use that uh, for this purpose uh, for authenticating Salesforce. Uh, the subject of the SAML assertion um, in a sim similar to the JOT needs to be set to the to the uh, user, some, uh, some specific identifier for the user, which for Salesforce is the username. And in general, we would also expect the, the um, or the, the auth server would also um, be expected to, uh, to validate these general SAML, SAML validations, so things like expiry. So what to consider around choosing one of these flows. So, um, so both of these flows are, are considered very secure um, and generally best practice for, for integrations which don't involve, um, don't involve user interaction. Um, the job bearer flow is probably the more common one nowadays, just based on, um, uh, based on this being a little, little more suitable for, for um, for modern REST technologies, so the ability to construct a JOT is, 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 is generally in place with, with most, most modern systems and it's a slightly lighter weight um, payload um, in comparison to the, to the Base64 encoded XML assertion. Um, so these flows um, are kind of best practice and, and ideal really for, um, uh, for continuous integration. Um, and so, um, uh, so the authorization for a continuous integration server um, against Salesforce or, or another system. Um, for ETL and ESB use cases where we have middleware where a user isn't necessarily involved at the time that the authentication is happening. Um, integrations between Salesforce orgs, uh, the job bearer flow particularly is, is quite suitable for that. Um, and integrations where we are we're potentially with the, with the back end of a public website that, that, that an enterprise is offering. Um, again, where we have um, perhaps we have form information coming back that needs to be pushed into Salesforce, um, but there isn't a user involved in that in that process. Um, so yeah, and and really really general server to server interactions. Um, one thing that we do need to just consider as, as part of implementing one of these flows is, is how that approval is, is going to happen. Um, so whether that's that's pre-authorization in the way that's supported with, with Salesforce um, or or some uh, some process outside of the, the flow to provide that, that user consent. 